Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. You request it, I do my best to deliver what you ask for. So right here, I have a Lee Time 48 volt inverter, 3500 watt rated, 120 volts output. Uh, very exciting new product from Lee Time. So it's still in the box right here. So I'm gonna set up a 48 volt demonstration system. Uh, this will be part one, just checking out the inverter. Uh, so a whole entire build for those of you that like 48 volt. So let's get right into it. So let's unbox this inverter and see what comes in the package. Nice foam pad around everything. I got a quick start guide sitting right there. Oh, that's pretty. Look at that black color scheme with the orange and white writing. Oh, that looks so nice. Let me finish unboxing, get all this foam around it, off from around it right here, and uh, we'll check out a little further. Isn't that just a pretty inverter? This is an all-in-one inverter, by the way. It's got a built-in charge controller. Uh, you can do grid input, generator input to charge your batteries, all kinds of stuff. I'll go over every feature, but this is a budget-friendly all-in-one. I'm so excited about this inverter. So what do you get when you purchase a lead time 3500 watt inverter? Well, of course you get a quick start guide. You get a comprehensive user manual, product manual, and they give you an accessory bag to get you start off on the right foot. It includes wall anchors, wire ferrules, battery terminals, Heat shrink tubing, MC4 connectors, they even give you a screwdriver. So what you'll need to provide, of course, is batteries, solar panels, wiring, and circuit protection. Before I mount this inverter on the wall, I'm just going to pop the cover off to a quick check, just a visual check on the wiring, make sure everything looks good inside, no wires loose. Just see the overall build quality of the inverter. So I'm going to show you this on the side first. Check out the screened inlet right here for the air. Uh, it's got a little filtration system right here, a little mesh behind this cover to keep bugs and stuff out. So I'm assuming the airflow comes in here and goes down the bottom because the cooling fans are down here. Uh, gives you your spec tag right here on the side. And then the opposite side, of course, another screened air inlet right there. And we got a AC input breaker on this side. Then on the bottom of the inverter, we have our power switch right here, our AC input and AC output knockouts with wire protectors right there. We got dry contacts, RS45 USB port right there, dual cooling fans, there's our battery wire knockout right there, and then the PV knockout right there. Then on the bottom of the inverter, we have our PV terminal block right here. There's our battery connection points right there, and then our AC output and AC input terminal blocks right here. Uh, nice little plastic screen right here to, to bring the airflow down through these Heat sinks right here, so you know, it looks pretty good so far. And here's a view of the inverter with the main cover taken off. Everything is tight, large heat sinks, inductors, large capacitor bank. I don't see anything really to complain about. No wires rubbing or touching. The closest wire would be this PV right here, but the way it's bent, there's plenty of clearance between the PV side charger heat sink. So I don't see any issue with that right there. So that's the closest wire to, to touching anything. But the heat sinks are anchored to the board. They're not just sitting on the FET bank. So, you know, it's solid. It looks rock solid so far. I said good cable management in this. The wires aren't just laid in there. I mean, everything is, is zip tied down where it's not going to move. So, I mean, yeah, I don't see really anything to complain about, about the build quality or the assembly. And there's the top bracket to hang the inverter on. And for reference, it is nine inches from here to here. So I made a paint marker dot at four and a half for center. And then I'm gonna mount it on a non-flammable surface. Got my center mark there, my height and level mark right there. So there's the lead time inverter mounted on the wall with the included lags. They're roughly an inch long, quarter inch diameter, and they got a Phillips and Hex drive. Uh, that's going through concrete board to 7 16 OSB behind there. So plenty sufficient to hold the 20-ish pound inverter. And this is not mentioned in the manual, but you can see the inverter, the bottom of it will come off the wall. Uh, there's a screw hole right there where you can attach another anchor near the bottom, near the battery inputs. So you can run your little construction screw right there or drywall screw, whatever, to pin the inverter against the wall so the bottom will not move from any force. That's that one inch drywall screw, anchors it right down. It's not gonna move. So for the battery connections right there, they include lugs. These are 35 millimeter lugs or roughly number two. They recommend a minimum of number four. I end up using two gauge Windy Nation cables about five feet down to a server rack battery. I'll shut in a minute. This is temporary. I don't have my DC combiner in yet or anything like that. I'm just checking this inverter 
to make sure it works. Uh, so I went ahead and hooked the battery leads up. You can see I used the included connectors right there, put some heat shrink on them. So this is just temporary, nowhere near finished. I just wanna make sure everything is going to work properly on this inverter before I continue. So the leads come down to this battery right here. Uh, it's got its own little breaker on it. So running it temporary like this, I'm gonna be okay. But like I said, there's gonna be a DC combiner with a dedicated inverter breaker and breakers down to multiple batteries. This is just one battery that's gonna be on this system. Um, very good battery, very nice server at battery, very affordable. Uh, so everything's tightened down, snugged up. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it on. Should fire the battery right up. We'll get the display on right here. So there's the display. The battery's at 94%. I hadn't finished charging anything yet. I just charged up enough to run this inverter for you today. So uh, we got power up here, I'm sure. So I'll hit the switch on the inverter and it should fire up. So I apologize about the lighting. Let me, uh, let me hit the lighting right there so you can see. There's the display. A little bit bright in here, but there's your display on the lead time inverter. And it's got an error code 58, which is low battery because I've not programmed it yet. It doesn't know what settings to use. So let me clear that out and then we will check the output voltage and I'll work on it some more. Change the lighting around a little bit so you can maybe see a little bit better. There's the error code. I said, I just put new lights and stuff in here. So, uh, you know, I'm getting, getting used to filming with my new setup. So I apologize about any lighting or shadowing effects. So let me try to get you, let's see if we can make that screen. Well, I know that made it more shiny. Uh, well, sorry about that. I tried, but you see we're at 53.0 volts. Uh, that's what the inverter is showing. And then the Vader battery showing 53.08 coming out, 0.8, 0.9 of an amp. Uh, idle current on the lead time. Not bad at all. I went through and made some, some setting changes for the 16S battery. I selected that in the user menu and that made the little over voltage alarm or whatever go away right here, the code 58. And you see the AC inverter light is flashing. That means there's no grid connection, but the inverter is working in the lead time is what that indicates. And of course, there's no grid connection. There's no grid connection here, but I've got another micro grid that's gonna attach to it for its grid feed. So let's just check the output voltage real fast on the lead time inverter. And let's see what it's actually putting out. 120.1 volt. Then just check, uh, check the sine wave unloaded just to make sure everything's looking good on here. So let me get the probes in there. Oh, that looks pretty good. Nice and clean. And it has adjustable frequency and adjustable voltages, you can change all kinds of settings uh, in this inverter. So you can do 100 volts, 110 volts, 120 volts, 50 hertz, 60 hertz, all that good stuff. Like I said, I'll go over all my settings uh, for my particular installation purposes or needs. So I know it's working, it's producing power, so now I'll continue with the AC wiring. So I'm gonna shut it off and no beeps, that's great. No alarms, shut off just fine. And I'll come down here and I'm gonna kill this.